basement I have to make these videos every once in a while thankfully it's not too often uh, and the reason this one's super frustrating is because it's purely me just making a mistake you know making a decision it was a bad decision and unfortunately some of my fish paid the price for my bad decision and uh, anyone who's watched this channel for a while knows that I take being a, uh, a custodian of the fish in my care seriously uh, you know the fish that come here they don't get rehomed they stay here for life I pride myself on them having a long life and breeding. Uh, if they get evicted from their home, they always go to a bigger home, all those kind of things. Uh, point being is I do care a lot about the fish. I, I don't like it when people, uh, you know, don't take, take it seriously that, yes, it's a fish, it's not a dog or a cat, whatever, but it's still a life you've taken the responsibility to care for, and I, I think you should do it, and that's how I treat it. And I made a mistake that uh, cost the fish their life, so... Um, we're going to cover that in this video, and don't worry, I'm not going to make you wait to the end. We're going to go do that first, uh, as well as, unfortunately, everything else is going good. Uh, the Koi Pond, uh, the, the, the 600 Asian Jungle, the 750 uh, Amazon Island, all the things we've been looking at lately, the marine tanks, everything's going great, uh, as well as the Fish Basement Annex. We're going we're gonna to take a look at that in the video. In this video, uh, that sucker is uh, pretty done. It's, uh, it's time for me to paint, but... Um, yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna do all that in this video. So uh, let's get the let's get the bad news out of the way first. Okay, it is week four, uh, day one, Monday, and on the inside again, just a little bit more mudding. Most of the action was on the outside. So let's go take a look. So today was all about finishing the outside. We got the flashing up top, uh, the molding for the windows, and for the space between the flashing and the siding. Uh, the molding for the door and of interest uh, and a little something custom to a uh, fish room which is a place for my de dehumidifier, my wall mount dehumidifier to come and exit out and down. Um, there'll obviously be a uh, sort of a uh, dry river, well it's either going to be the like your normal concrete spout that takes the water away or I was kind of thinking about doing around the edge of this whole thing sort of a dry riverbed kind of thing for all the water uh, instead of doing the gutters, but haven't decided on that yet, we'll figure it out. Uh, but at any rate, yeah, uh, for dehumidifier has continuous drain. That's the, that's the important part. So <laughs> that's good. what's gonna facilitate that and also, and maintain the insulating properties of the room and keep any insects or anything like that out. So that is the interesting part, but yes, we are outside, we are complete. So unfortunately, the bad news has me standing in front of the 220-gallon uh, uh, flooded forest discus aquarium, and uh, uh, yeah, this is where I made a bonehead decision. So what happened was I got a phone call from a buddy, and uh, he had a buddy who had a disc, a planted discus aquarium, and he wanted just to get rid of the discus, and he was just going to take them up to PetSmart and turn them in there, and. He wanted me to go get them because he was afraid that they wouldn't be well taken care of. Uh, they were just dumped off at a PetSmart. So I went over there and I was, you know, under the assumption that we're talking about a very well established tank with a large discus. Well, this is the only survivor of the discus I took from him. And you can see he's not very large. And uh, it turns out that uh, he, this guy didn't have these discus very long at all. Um, in fact, like a matter of a week or something, uh, two at the most. <clears throat> I don't know this guy. I go over there and, uh, you know, he's already got him in a bucket. He's torn his tank down, so I'm, I'm like, crap. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I start quizzing him on uh, how long he's had the fish. I find it hasn't been very long, and I'm concerned because I don't have my quarantine system going because uh, I'm moving things into, you know, <laughs> get the fish annex stuff going on. I uh, wasn't planning on acquiring any fish right now, and I'm thinking the only place I have to put these guys is in my established discus aquarium. And uh, I was obviously concerned uh, because, you know, I have a healthy, well-established discus aquarium. So, uh, I, this is where I made the mistake. I brought them over and I added them uh, with my existing stock. And what proceeded to happen was, uh, over the course of a couple days, 
all of my discus went from being normal like this and swimming all around to all going up to the top surface of the water uh, and just kind of being lethargic and, and not, not eating. Uh, no external signs uh, of uh, distress, like no clamp fins, no uh, uh, body um, film, or uh, no, no slime coat peeling off or anything like that, no ick or anything like that. So immediately I'm thinking internal parasites. And the, the fish that I got from him, they already looked kind of emaciated, not super bad, but they weren't, weren't plump anyway. But he was telling me what he was trying to feed him, and it was pretty much ridiculous stuff, like kind of like too large a cichlid, like a cichlid pellet that, I mean, maybe it could have fit in their mouth, but barely, and like some Tupafex freeze-dried worms and everything. It was, I don't know. It didn't surprise me that he was saying that the fish weren't interested in what he was trying to feed them. So I'm thinking, okay, I got the right food over here. I got a group of discus who did take these guys in. No one picked on them. They were accepted, but uh, they immediately got my guys sick. Um, I'm thinking internal parasite at this point. Only thing I had right on hand at the time uh, was some Melifix. So I put it in there and I saw immediate improvement. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, okay, it's definitely looking like internal parasite. I ordered medication. I treated for that. And as you can see, everybody is good again. Now this, none of this affected any other fish in the tank. It only seemed to affect the discus. However, over the course of, of that time period of really just a day and a half that I didn't have the medicine. Uh, I lost three of the, the baby fish that I brought in from the guy. There, there was uh, two uh, blue diamonds and two turquoise, and there's only one turquoise that survived. And, but unfortunately, I lost one of my large turquoise, so I have one left, and I lost a, a pigeon blood. So, uh, I'm sorry, a pigeon, uh, two pigeon, uh, yes, two pigeon bloods. So, uh, super frustrating, uh, completely self-inflicted wound uh, that, that, you know, cost, you know, I cost some of my discus their life and uh, super frustrating. So, I mean, it just makes me want to double down even more on uh, the quarantine system in the, in the fish basement annex. I've allocated space for it. Uh, I've got a design to double it in size from what I have right now. And not even because I plan on just always bringing in fish or anything like that, but if I run into this kind of situation where I have to quote unquote save a fish or anything like that, I want to be more prepared. So that's the bad and we got that out of the way. Um, fortunately, there's a lot of good in this video as well. So let's get on to, let's get on to the good stuff. So it's Tuesday in the fourth week of construction and it was all about storm doors. <laughs> there is a... Uh, Storm door is now installed on both sides of the build, these guys here, so gonna create a great barrier, um, temperature barrier, you can see the other one over there. And uh, beyond a little bit of more touch up on a couple spots of drywall, that's all we did today. Doors, storm doors. So keep it short on this Tuesday. Hopefully we'll get to uh, some molding and everything pretty soon, but uh, we're getting close. All right, on to Wednesday. So one thing that does feel good is to have these boys back eating the food right from my fingers and uh, being aggressive and, and happy once again. Doesn't make up for the loss, but uh, it definitely makes me feel good to see the boys back being normal, uh, healthy and happy again in the 220 Discus Aquarium. Okay, so it's the end of the week four. It's Friday and uh, some serious progress. In fact, uh, we're really buttoning this thing up and... Uh, no, I'm not building a castle. That's uh, for the deck on top, but some time was spent doing that this week and has nothing to do with fish, but it is part of the room, so I thought I'd show you that. But uh, let's go ahead and jump in to the fish room annex, or to the fish basement annex. So before I go inside, though, the outside, we are done. We are trimmed. We have storm doors. We are all good. The only thing, happening, only thing left outside is the deck upstairs, and now we go inside. All right, now we are finally looking like a buttoned up fish room. We have trim on the windows, trim on the bottom of the walls, <laughs> LED lights all back in, all the mud work almost done. We had to make a little incision over here, so we have to redo a little area, but uh, that's no big deal. And you can see further, more trim over here. And the interesting part is we've gone ahead and put in the dimmers and we have put in the framework for what is going to be the, the pipe that goes out for 
the dehumidifier to do continuous draining. And of course we ran a dedicated 20 amp line for the ductless mini split, which would be mounted here and then the outside, outside part right behind it on the outside of the wall. And uh, yeah, other than that, it is done. <laughs> so just a matter of um, doing a little drywall work where we tore apart what we had already done because uh, we had to make an adjustment with the lines. We had to bring out another line to do everything we want to do and make sure we have plenty of, uh, plenty of juice and we have it spread out evenly throughout the room. So uh, every, all the tanks are on their own lines and, uh, or at least two tanks sharing a line and uh, not a whole bunch on one line. So whew, it is, <laughs> not gonna say here, but it is 99% of the way done in terms of construction. Literally just a tiny little drywall touch up is all that's left in here. But now starts the next phase, which I don't consider construction, but painting. So I need to, well, clean up, I guess. You can see it's cleaned up to some degree, um, but there's more cleanup to do. Uh, there's some extra materials to take back and uh, credit back to my credit card, which would be nice because the bills are adding up and uh, get the floor cleaned up because we have to, or I have to, paint the brick wall, paint the, all the walls and the ceiling and the floor, as well as the outside of the building and finish the deck up top. So uh, still a lot of work to go for me, but in terms of uh, the, fish, the fish room basement annex, it is almost there. Um, like I said, painting to go, and then it'll be time to, to start uh, thinking big DIY aquariums. Another area that is going good is the 600 gallon Asian jungle aquarium where uh, the new lighting, the lighting choice has definitely worked out. I'm loving the way the fish look under this lighting and uh, I'm loving the way the tank looks uh, with, the, with the center part of the aquarium cleared out some, making it much easier to see back in there and uh, see all these <laughs> basically uh, sort of fat, most of these guys being fat swimmers going in and out of these plants. Uh, it's definitely been much more enjoyable uh, seeing the aquarium, you know, this configuration where uh, it's a lot easier to uh, see all the way back and appreciate the, uh, the four foot of depth of this aquarium. Uh, also, I'm ready to actually pull out some of these plants over here uh, because I have their new home for them ready. So I think that'll work out as well. I think the left side is just a little, little heavy in the front there on the jungle valve and uh, I'd like to make it a little more like the right side where we have it, but we have quite a bit of space. So. I think that's going to also help make this tank pop, but overall, the 600 gallon Asian Jungle doing awesome. The filtration, you know, the custom filtration we did not long ago doing awesome. And uh, yeah, if anyone needs any water lettuce, let me know. Well, it's been pretty busy lately, uh, so much so that I haven't filmed every evening uh, between work and work. <laughs> um, it's just been hard to keep up, but uh, here's the progress. Uh, pretty much today's Thursday of the fifth week, so uh, you're not going to really notice uh, the work that's going to be done tomorrow because it's just some sanding. But I'm on the outside, the back side. You can see the I've been doing a lot of work on the deck upstairs, but I have also been doing work down here. So this is uh, this is our permanent drain for any dehumidifiers or anything like that. And uh, when we get on the inside, I'll show you what's right here. So as we jump inside the room, you see where I can feed in two different lines to the, to the drain. So basically what, what you can put in here is a PVC to hose bib adapter. And uh, that's where I will screw in, you know, drains for a dehumidifier, which could be like, say right here. Uh, and then if I'm not using it, I can just cap it. And what you see up here is a dedicated line for the mini split system, which is gonna run the annex. So. Uh, it'll have its own dehumidifier and its own mini split system uh, dedicated just to this space. So, uh, as well, of course, it's connected <laughs> to the other part of the fish basement. So, it can go either way uh, depending on the season. But uh, I've got the horsepower uh, up here to, well, I will once it's installed, uh, to manage this room all on its own if need be. So, the room itself, it is, uh, it's, you know, quote unquote done. There's just a little bit of sanding to go but uh, it is largely all put together, caulked, um, mudded, sanded, trim around the windows, trim around the floor and the doors. So 
all trimmed out everywhere. All the electrical lines are in place, the panel, all the upgrades are done. Uh, we've got the poles in the middle. They've been sanded and painted. They may get boxed in, they may not. Depends on, you know, how the, the tank builds go. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty confident we have a, a tank going right here and uh, pretty confident we have a big tank going 33 feet this way and then we're gonna figure out all of this middle space here. But uh, obviously gotta build those tanks <laughs> one at a time, so not too worried about that. There's plenty of time to get that ironed out, but uh, the room is ready. So, well, <laughs> ready for me to start painting. <laughs> so most of the tools are cleaned up out of here, but there is uh, a little bit of inspe cat inspection to do, or a little, a little bit for the inspector cat, I stand corrected, <laughs> to do, and uh, some cleanup. But we're gonna get this cleaned up, swept up, mopped up, and uh, I need to paint this brick wall. I need to paint the floor and of course the, the walls and the ceiling. And then once all the painting's done, obviously I'll, I'll put on the, uh, like the covers, the receptacles and everything like that. And we'll get the, the final polish on it. But uh, yeah, it is getting very close. So if you were not all that excited about home addition construction and you're looking forward to mega DIY aquarium construction, well, it is almost that time. <laughs> Uh, the best part of filming the 600 gallon Asian jungle is right behind it is the 750 gallon Amazonian Islands Aquarium. Man has this tank dialed in. This has come a long way. What a beauty. Uh, and, but it has really, really come together. Uh, the ecosystem in here is balanced out. The addition of that wood root up top, to me, it just this is, this is what I was always dreaming of. And the schools of smaller fish uh, in here has just made all the bigger guys pop, made the whole tank pop. Uh, I even have a few more of those guys. Uh, I know I said earlier, this video, I don't have like a real quarantine, but I do have one tank that I am quarantining a few little guys, uh, little guys for this aquarium. Uh, just some more Tetra uh, to add to the schools here. But uh, all it is is a, a, a small 10 gallon, but Loving the 750, and also the thing I wanted to really point out is the uh, albino redhead geophagus. They're finally growing up, and their colors are coming in. And man, these these guys are uh, they are beautiful. And there's actually a third one back there. So uh, yeah, they are not uh, albino. Uh, no, they're not. They're not uh, albino thread frenicara like they were billed, but they are beautiful in their own right. And uh, you know, since they cost more. Sometimes it's better just to get the thing, not the thing you ordered, but something you like just as much anyways. So at any rate, uh, 750 cruise control, and this is the way I like it. I just sit and enjoy this tank immensely. Uh, so, so in the short term, I just want to beef up the Tetra schools a little bit, and I'm still looking to add some smaller catfish uh, to complement my uh, quarry cat group, as well as more quarry cats. Uh, you never really have enough quarry cats, and this tank definitely doesn't have enough, so uh, I'm working on fixing that. All right, it is the fifth week of construction on the Fish Basement Annex. Uh, I still have work to do upstairs with a deck, but down here with the Annex, from the fish point of view, construction has completed. Let's head inside. So here we go. The room is built, 100% construction being done. Uh, there is of course a lot of painting to do, painting walls, floors, ceiling, brick walls, uh, and there is the mini split to add, but in terms of uh, construction, the tools are removed, the sanding is done, it is cleaned up, it is ready for, I'll call it the decorating phase with the painting and everything. And oh man, how cool is that gonna be? Opening up this window, removing this screen and be able to see into the other part of the fish room, Predator Bay, the uh, Malawi River, oh, good times. So super excited that the, to get this phase done and uh, start on the painting phase, because obviously we got to get all that done. Uh, and then after that comes DIY aquarium build time. And as far as that goes, it's gonna be interesting because the big boy is gonna come first. The, uh, the 33 footer is actually gonna be the, the first tank to build. So the biggest one is the first one uh, because it, 
this tank needs to be built before I can do the other things where I move the you know Predator Bay in the 3000 and or the reslope into Predator Bay, all that stuff. So everything hinges on the big boy being in place. So that's where we're gonna start. And it's probably just as well because you know, it's sort of that uh, downhill kind of thing, you know. Build the biggest, hardest one first, and then we'll work our way down. All right, super exciting times in the fish basement. And that's construction is done. So I like to think this is the last time I make a video where I screwed up and cost the life of a fish, but I'm sure it'll probably happen sometime again, but hopefully it's a long, long time away. Uh, either way, uh, the NX here, getting ready to paint. It's almost time for mega DIY builds. And uh, part of the builds is gonna be a very extensive uh, quarantine and grow out area. So something that's gonna be uh, a little bit above and beyond, accommodate all the new fish that are be coming to the NX. So uh, hopefully we'll nip this kind of problem in the bud and uh, I won't have this problem ever again. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, definitely check back soon because like I said, we're starting off with a bang. Uh, you'll find out the size of the, uh, the first DIY build in the next video and there's just gonna be a lot going on all summer, all fall, oh, the rest of the year, it's gonna be crazy. All right, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you soon.